Hi, I'm Ernie Conover, and this month we're going to make a tilt top candle stand in one of two styles, either a very simple shaker style or a little more complicated Queen Anne style. The stem uh, of this uh, table is a straightforward spindle turning, while the top is straightforward faceplate turning, so it's a nice mix of skills. There are two difficult points in making this table. One is making the sockets, uh, dovetail shaped sockets, uh, to accept the legs for the table. And the second is making the top absolutely flat. I'd like to show you how to do that in detail. My jig for routing the uh, dovetail shaped slots in the stem is simply a box made of scrap plywood, which I glued and nailed together and I put a tongue on, centered on the bottom so it will center on my lathe bed. And then I cut a 5 8 slot about halfway up the box that matches a guide bushing on my router. And with a dovetail shaped bit, I can now very easily route the stems. In a trial run, I counted out uh, the index marks to give me 120 degrees separation from each of the places and marked them the spindle with a uh, magic marker so that I can do this quickly when I'm routing. So I have my router connected to a tool triggered vacuum which will suck up most of the chips and I have a line drawn on the box that will line up with a line that shows the center of the spindle on my router. And there we have our finished uh, dovetail shaped slots in the stem. Okay, I have the top chucked up and ready to go. I've chucked it on a paper joint and I cover paper joint chucking in another video. I have just barely rounded the bottom corner here and put a little bit of taper on the edge to make it look aesthetically pleasing. I have then drawn a line right here one inch from the edge and we're going to then recess this whole area and make it perfectly flat. We'll take most of the material out with a bowl gouge just like so, but then we'll go to this uh, what I call a boat tail scraper which is an inch and a quarter wide. It's ground straight across but on the very far corner here I've knocked it off at about a 15 degree angle so it won't leave a line behind it. I've radiused this edge and there's a cutting edge all the way around there so that I can bring it to the left like this and create a perfectly flat surface. I've also adjusted the rest so that it is parallel to this tabletop and I won't move it throughout the process. It's at the right height to cut with a bowl gouge, but it's also at the right height to cut downhill with this scraper. Let's take a look at it in action. The best uh, tool for checking flatness is just a straight piece of wood which you can put down like this. I'm a little low here and uh, I've got it reasonably flat. I've got about enough material. I've reduced this to about a half inch in this area which is where I want to be. And I'll now go to the scraper and make this dead flat. And you see by following the tool rest, this is going to force me to be dead flat. My knuckle is against the tool rest and it's keeping the scraper at exactly the same depth throughout the whole process. Okay, I've uh, brought that pretty nice and flat. I've got a nice square corner right in here and I'm now going to take the bowl gouge and make a little scallop down and leave a little bit of a reveal here and a nice curved edge that will make it quite beautiful. Now the final tool we're going to use in uh, our uh, battle to get flatness here is simply an electric drill with a sanding 
disc on it like this. And this will help to further flatten this and make it an excellent tabletop. Okay, it's all finished. We've sanded it out nice and flat. If you have trouble getting it flat with the uh, drill mounted sander, a random orbit sander in this area will further flatten things. Uh, hope you enjoy this project and until next time, this is uh, Ernie Conover saying happy wood turning.